Hi, everybody. It's meteorologist Joe Chaffee on what is turning out to be a very, very nice Sunday. Took the day off yesterday. I was at my daughter's graduation. She graduated uh, from uh, Villanova University, and uh, now it's to finish off med school and see where it goes from there. So congratulations to my youngest daughter. And in the meantime, we uh, carry on. We've got <clears throat> low pressure headed up toward the Great Lakes and a pretty extensive a uh, area of uh, weather here. You know what? I want to just move this a little forward. I want to stop it right near. There we go. That's better. Okay, so you know we've got this low that's up here in the Great Lakes, and this trailing front that's uh, moving eastward. A bit of an onshore flow that's keeping things rather cool here in the east, and also uh, severe weather today over parts of the uh, eastern Gulf states into the southeast, and uh, parts of the Tennessee and Ohio Valley, at least in a narrow area. And when we look at the uh, Storm Prediction Center, which we're going to look at now, you can see where the risks for severe weather are kind of broken around because of the fact that the energy in the atmosphere is sort of spread out. We've got an area of slight risk in southwest Texas uh, and across uh, much of uh, eastern Texas uh, into Louisiana and parts of southern Mississippi. And we've got this other patch of marginal risk in Georgia and South Carolina. Whoops, wasn't supposed to do that. And there you go. And then we have this small area of marginal risk in Ohio and eastern Ohio and in western Pennsylvania. So uh, we'll just carry this along and see where it goes uh, with regards to tomorrow. And this is when the weather shifts to the east. And it doesn't. Let me just move this up to day two now. And not much severe weather here in the east uh, with uh, the front approaching. And we've got a slight area of a area of slight risk in parts of North Texas, so you can see how the marginal risk sort of fingers in a very, um, I don't know how to even describe it. Let's just leave it alone. And we've got a uh, marginal risk from uh, East Texas on up uh, into Southern Louisiana and the Gulf Coast. So that's for tomorrow. Now, radar at the moment, area of rain here, maybe a few little embedded heavier downpours and a couple of thunderstorms, but nothing uh, overly impressive as we can see for some reason the loop is not working very well today let's see if i can get this to refresh there we go and that area is moving north northeast so you can see how dry it is here in the eastern states we've got some showers and storms along the gulf coast not too much happening out in the west and some activity back over to texas and in the northern great lakes so kind of a little cutout here of where the precipitation is and uh, speaking of uh, today and precipitation we have none but you can see it's nice and relatively cool temperatures mostly in the low to mid 60s with a few uh, areas in the upper 60s to near 70 in southeastern Pennsylvania so a very very nice day all the way around which is uh, a good thing and out in the west we don't have too much happening a little bit of action still in the uh, parts of the, the northern and central Rockies uh, but nothing really too serious at the moment and we've got a weather system that's offshore the Pacific Northwest, but it looks like most of the West Coast is enjoying some very nice weather from Washington all the way down into California and into the Southwest. So let's take you through what we think is going to happen this week in the East. I think it's going to be one of these weeks where we're going to have, we're not going to have one big dominating weather system, and it's probably just going to be several ones coming along in pieces. So that will mean that we'll have some stretches where it will be raining, and we'll have some stretches where it won't be. The first stretch of rain for us will come tomorrow uh, into tomorrow evening and I don't know that it rains straight through it might be a situation where it's light and spotty in the morning and then a little steadier rain in the afternoon then that low moves out another low comes out from this uh, complex low pressure system that's in the Great Lakes and shoots up to the northeast but this one gets ejected to our south a little bit of that rain gets in here Tuesday night across New Jersey and Long Island but doesn't really make it much further north than that but you you, you sort of see here it's just it's kind of this mess that we have um, with this this uh, situation. Um, everything's sort of getting stretched out in all directions. You got a lot of energy running around, but nothing that's particularly concentrated. So this will probably wind up keeping weather conditions rather unsettled here through the whole week. And then another shot for rain looks like maybe on Thursday as that low rotates around the Great Lakes, and then we go into the Memorial Day weekend. And, you know, it's kind of questionable to me. It's not going to be overly warm here. It's not going to be overly cool, it's just kind of somewhere in the middle. 
I, I think we'll probably have some dry stretches, but you know, it's going to be kind of tough with this uh, weak blocking that's up in the atmosphere that's going to be ebbing and flowing for the next, next week to 10 days. So that's going to have some impact on how these models are going forward. And speaking of going forward, I just want to look. I want to give everybody at least a laugh at this because we're getting into the season now where we're going to start seeing models doing silly stuff on occasion. And here is an example of it was last night's GFS model, which spun up what looked like a Category 2 hurricane in the eastern Gulf for the first week of June and took it uh, into uh, toward the Florida coast. Okay, we're going to start seeing these things, and I'm going to tell you probably that for every 10 of them that the models spin up, maybe one of them winds up being uh, something to keep an eye on. So I'm not going to be really paying too much attention to, to this sort of thing going forward. But, you know, when it's relevant, uh, we'll, of course, talk about it. But I just want to make everybody aware that you, just like in the wintertime, when you go into the long range and you see models spinning up snowstorms that never happen uh, in the east, <clears throat> the same will hold true for hurly, hurricane season, and particularly the Canadian model, which for some reason likes to spin up every little every little indicator, indication that there's lower pressure someplace suddenly becomes a Category 5 hurricane. So uh, just beware of that. Here's a look overall. You can see the west kind of calms down a little bit. And there really isn't too much action. We've got some scattered action moving through the Rockies later um, on, on Memorial Day weekend. But, you know, and there are going to be a couple of outbreaks <clears throat> of severe weather probably in the middle Mississippi Valley and then eventually into the Tennessee Valley next weekend. But yeah, on the whole, I'm really... Not really too overly impressed by this overall pattern. And as we look at the day run, by the way, it actually does do this tropical system. You can't really see it too well, but this time around it looks like, let me see if I can get a region where we can see far enough south. Let's try this one. Okay, so it looks like it's going it's still trying to show lower pressures in the Northwest Caribbean uh, that wind up going you know, to the west into the Pacific. I mean, uh, you know, who knows? But I got to tell you something, at least we're going into the month, of, as we go to the month of June, if anything's going to happen in terms of development, more than likely it would be somewhere in this area. Although sometimes it does, you know, extend out uh, into the Bahamas and th that would probably become later in the month. And of course, gradually the area of development begins to spread uh, eastward and northeastward and then covers by the end of the month, the whole Gulf of Mexico. Um is in there. By the way, it looks like either looks like a baseball cap, I either that or a duck. <laughs> I'm no artist. I guess I drew a duck with its head laying on its side. All right, kind of having a little fun on this something. So uh, let's look at the upper air. And you know, we're going to try to see if we can gain a status of how this blocking pattern is going forward. Because really, at the end of the day, this is where you know, this is going to be a, the, the player, it seems. But you can see it here as it developed over this past weekend, that upper high sitting up there uh, in over Greenland, which it's doing today right in here. Nothing like the strength of the block that we saw the last time, uh, but that signature of that jet stream further south begins to appear. And then that gradually translates here into the east. So you can see it there. That's a pretty good trough that develops there in the eastern part of the United States for later this week. Um, we'll have to see if the bottles come into a, some sort of different idea of this over the next day or two. But then that kind of pulls out as we go to Memorial Day weekend, but the flow is sort of flat. You still have above normal pressures for the most part up in northern Canada. So that's going to try and at least keep the jet stream further south of normal. Uh, and going forward on the new GFS um, right into the very first few days of June, this remains the case. So, you know, I'm, I don't really see anything... Uh, that we really have to worry about on a grand scale. It just seems like we're going into some sort of, you know, weak blocking pattern, a little bit cooler here in the east, uh, stretches of unsettled weather, and no sign of that another three-day heat wave coming anytime soon, although I'm sure they'll, it'll uh, make its appearance. And by the way, I just wanted to just point out, I mean, I'm, I really was, I am not a fan of the three-day definition of a heat wave because that just makes for too many heat waves, and it's kind of silly to me. Um, I always liked the standard, the old, the old uh, definition was five days, and that makes, you know, more sense to me, but I, can I tell you, the Weather Service now says three days for a heat wave, so, 
you know, if, if the argument ever comes up that there's more heat waves now than there ever were, I would just beg the question right away. We, how are we measuring this? Are you measuring apples to apples or apples to oranges? Are you measuring three-day heat waves or five-day heat waves? Because if you're measuring three-day heat waves now compared to five-day heat waves and how they used to count it, then you're not counting the same thing. So let's just put that on the table and we will leave it at that. Okay, folks, have a great rest of your Sunday. The weather's too nice out where you are, so you shouldn't be here. Uh, enjoying my videos. You should be outside in the nice weather, which I'm going to do for the rest of this afternoon. And uh, if you uh, did really enjoy the video, be sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the lit little red subscribe button on the channel page. If, I'm going to be putting up, by the way, another instructional video. I think I'll put up something with regards to uh, hurricanes and tropical storms and you know what you can w look for in general, um, what to look for, and uh, what perhaps to uh, anticipate uh, in the next, in the coming months. So everybody have a great uh, rest of your day and we'll talk to you soon.